Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at the AQA A-Level Chemistry Year 2 course and we're going to be talking about optical isomerism. By the end of this lesson then, we should be able to do the following things. We should know what optical isomerism is and explain what is meant by chirality. Identify molecules containing optical isomers and chiral carbons. Recall the meaning of optical isomerism and how enantiomers can affect the plane of polarised light. And finally, we're going to be able to describe and explain the formation of racemic mixtures and explain why they are optically inactive. In the Year 1 A-level course, then, we looked at isomers and we suggested that isomers were molecules with the same molecular formula but somehow some other way different. So we looked previously at structural isomers which were isomers, the same molecular formula but different structures, chain, position and functional group. And the other options here were stereoisomers, and this occurred in EZ, alkenes, and uh, stereoisomer, the case was always geometric, they were uh, molecules with the same molecular formula but different orientations in space. So this year we'll be looking at optical isomers, in particular and these are isomers with the same molecular formula but different spatial arrangements. So optical isomers are a type of stereoisomerism and remember our definition here of stereoisomerism is something with the same structural formula but different spatial arrangements of its atoms. All of our optical isomers we'll be looking at have one thing in common, and that is they have a chiral carbon. It's a chiral carbon. A chiral carbon is one that has four different groups attached to it. Now be careful here, they're different groups. They don't have to be different functional groups as is often confused, but just four different groups attached. So let's have a look at our example that we've got here. The molecule here is one, two, three, propanoic acid. With a hydroxy on the second carbon. So this is 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. The central carbon here has got a methyl group, a hydroxy group, a hydrogen and a carboxylic acid group and so we describe this as a chiral carbon and we denote the chiral carbon with a star. like so. There can be more than one chiral carbon in a molecule. Most of the ones you'll be looking at in this course will just have the one chiral carbon, but be aware that you might be able to find several chiral carbons within a molecule. The chiral carbon, as we can see here, with four different groups around it, means that our molecules can have two different ways of arranging those groups around that central carbon and what this gives rise to is we get two different enantiomers or two different isomers. Each isomer is called an enantiomer. If we have a look at this enantiomer one on the left hand side and we look at enantiomer number two here on the right hand side they are related to each other by the fact that they've got the same molecular formula same geometric formula but they are mirror images of one another and importantly they are non super imposable mirror images of one another. That means they can't be stuck on top of each other, they can't be put on top of each other. 
It's a bit like having a left hand and a right hand. This dotted line we'll get used to is the mirror plane about which our non-superimposal mirror image is reflected. Now let's have a look at how we would go about drawing our optical isomers. So here is an example we're going to look at with 1-amino ethan 1-ol. So we know first of all that this is optical because it has a chiral carbon because this central carbon in the middle has got an OH group, an NH2 group, a CH3 group and there is also a hydrogen group because that's a skeletal formula so it's got four different groups so our chiral carbon is this one here so the first thing to do is to draw one of the enantiomers we put the central chiral carbon in the middle and then I'd encourage you to draw the tetrahedral shape about the carbon with the line pointing towards the right. We put on our groups, so we'll have OH up, this bit doesn't really matter, NH2 to the right here, we've got our methyl group here, and then we've got our hydrogen around the back. We're then going to draw our mirror plane in as a dashed line, and we can then draw the mirror image here. With our carbon again and the easiest way is if you just draw exactly the same shape and then just do one of the groups in the same spot and then switch the other two about this will ensure that you draw a good optical isomer And there we've got one enantiomer on the left, the second enantiomer on the right. They're non-superimposable mirror images. Now, the reason optical isomers are called optical isomers is due to the fact that if you were to shine a light source of plain polarised light towards a chiral sample, and you shone the light through the sample and then you were observing the light on the other side. If you have an enantiomer that you pass through, the light will be rotated by a given angle. And so enantiomers rotate the plane of polarized light which is useful because that gives us a way of measuring how much of an enantiomer we might have in a given compound. There is a slight problem with this detection system though. As we will see in future lessons possible to make a 50-50 or one-to-one -one mixture of enantiomers in a reaction. And if you end up with a mixture of 50-50 enantiomers, then we call this a racemic mixture. We call it a racemate, and this is optically inactive, and that's not because neither molecule rotates a plane of polarized light, but as we can see up here, one of our enantiomers rotates a plane of light in one direction, but the second enantiomer rotates the plane of light in the opposite direction. And if that's a 50-50 mix, 
they are equal and opposite directions and therefore the final effect that we actually observe at the end here is no rotation whatsoever. Okay, so at the end of this lesson, you should be able to know what optical isomerism is, explains what meant by chirality, you should be able to identify molecules, you should be able to draw molecules as well, which are optically active and contain chiral compounds, you should be able to recall the meaning of optical isomerism and how enantiomers can affect the plane of polarized light, light and describe and explain the formation of racemic mixtures and explain why they are optically inactive. That's all for now. I look forward to seeing you next time.